Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am filming this from my Airbnb room in Haifa, Israel. My room, or I guess this entire apartment, is kind of like right near the bus station. And I think there's a subway that runs underneath. The only subway in Israel, apparently, according to my friend. So I apologize if there's loud traffic noises in the background. But I really wanted to get on here and just film like half a get ready with me and more importantly i wanted to play with the new jaclyn hill highlighter palette that i got my friend brought for me over from the states as you can tell i'm filming on my webcam right now because i actually forgot to bring the little charger thing for my camera battery which i am so mad about but there's nothing that i can really do about that at this point i was gonna just like finish up the rest of my face and then hopefully I think I still have a tiny bit of juice left on my camera battery so hopefully I'll be able to at least get you some HD shots of the Jaclyn Hill palette more specifically the Jaclyn Cosmetics Accent Light Duo because I did get the set that also comes with a brush this is just an empty box I have the brush and the palette right here so I think I'm actually going to attempt to use this as eyeshadow because I purchased the flare. By the time that I finally got around to ordering it from their website they only had the flare palette left which is fine because I figure I can just use the lightest shade for highlight and the rest I'll use as um, eyeshadow. It kind of reminds me of a certain Tom Ford eyeshadow palette, doesn't it? I forget the name, but I'll insert a picture if I can find it. But before that, I have to put some foundation on my face. Um, so I already laid down my base and sunscreen and everything. I'm going to be going in with the Misha M Cushion Foundation. I think the M stands for moisture. And this has SPF 50 plus PA++++. But more importantly, it is a limited edition Kirby design with the store It's Demo in Japan. I think in my travel makeup bag packing video I had stated that I was going to bring this along with my usual Kate foundation. Yeah, I ended up just bringing this and it's been working out really beautifully. Why add more dead weight to the luggage, right? Now, the only minorly annoying thing about this is that this film on top of the mirror is kind of hard to get off. Like right now you can see it's finally peeling off because I've been scratching at it with my nail for so long. But there's no like tab or anything to help you lift it off. So anyway, that's just a minor, minor complaint. Now it's off and we have a beautiful mirrored cushion foundation compact. Sorry, there's like cars beeping behind me. This is not like my Tokyo apartment where I can just wait it out for people to pass by. The traffic noises here are pretty much ongoing, in this apartment at least. Okay, so yeah, I actually don't really enjoy using this puff that comes with it, although it is truly adorable with the Kirby face. But um, what I am going to do is I'm just going to take my Rosie Rosa sponge and oof, start dipping in. I'm actually really, really impressed by this foundation. It's super light and fresh feeling. And it does live up to its name of Moisture Cushion Foundation. It definitely has a very dewy, moist, glowy finish without making me look oily, which is always my fear with those kinds of formulas. I found that the best way to apply this, and perhaps all other foundations from now on too, is to do these really light tapping motions. Or actually, medium pressure I think works best. So medium to hard bouncing tapping motions with a sponge. Now I don't know how much of it is due to the actual formulation of this foundation or maybe it's a mixture of this and my Prima Vista face primer but I have been having the most glowing amazing all day lasting makeup for the entire time that I've been here in Israel. I mean maybe it's the Israel atmosphere who knows it could be that but in any case I feel like I found a really winning combination here with you know, the primer plus the cushion foundation and the application, the bouncy, pouncy application technique. It doesn't just look good for like the first couple of hours. I'm talking like 12, 13 hours later. I go up to check my makeup in the middle of dinner and I'm looking in the bathroom mirror at the restaurant and it's like, wow, still pretty much as fresh and 
even looking as when I first applied that morning. All right, so that is the base. I'm going to do my eyebrows, bronzer, and blush off camera. Oh, you know what I totally forgot? I have been using L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear Concealer. Usually I do that under the foundation, but it's okay. We can put it on over and then just blend it all out with the residue from the sponge. By the way, I don't know if any of you have been following me on Instagram. I've been posting a lot of stereotypical Instagram vacation photos on there. If you'll notice, I have been doing a pretty good job of wearing a full face of makeup like every single day that I've been here so far. That is no small feat for me considering that I'm on vacation in a different country. You know, if we're honest, if it wasn't for my friend who wasn't like super gung-ho about watching and seeing as much of the city as possible in a single day, I mean, I would probably succumb to just the temptation of sleeping half the day away. That's just what I tend to do when I have some off time and it's what I want to do always in my head. But because I've kind of had to take someone else's schedule and plans into account, I have been really diligent about like budgeting time in the mornings to shower and do my makeup and stuff. You know, I have to say that it's really been paying off because every day that I've been here, people have been just randomly coming up to me on the streets and telling me how beautiful I am. I even had somebody try to hit on me at Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Memorial, which was kind of inappropriate and I was really taken aback. But like at the same time, I'm not gonna lie, it feels good to be told how nice you look by strangers all the time. So this is why I'm never gonna stop wearing makeup, you guys. All right, I'm gonna finish these brows and be back in a minute. All right, we have migrated to the bathroom because there's no ledge or place that I can set my camera on in my room. Just one little comment before I get into the highlighters. I am freezing out here, okay? <laughs> I feel like I was told, I was catfished into believing that it was gonna be like warm, mild, springy weather here. It's not, I'm freezing my ass off. At least my room has a heating, at least my room has a little heater installed in it, but it's actually kind of weak, so even when I turn it on, I'm still cold. But who knows, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that'll bring out the frostiness of these highlighters even more. So I'm gonna try to move really quickly here because like I said, my camera battery only has a little bit of life left on it. So first of all, this is, as I showed you before, the packaging the outside packaging of the little bundle that I got. It's called the Accent Light Duo. And in it, I received the Flare four pan highlighter palette as well as the Jaclyn Cosmetics highlighter brush. I'm trying to angle it so that the letters show up. Um, you know, I gotta say people kind of make fun of Jaclyn sometimes for her packaging. I guess she's just kind of predictable with the whole white and silver and the diamonds and glitter and whatnot. But to be honest with you, this type of aesthetic is actually right up my alley. I am also really into that crisp, clean white with silver accent type of aesthetic. So for me, this is like, aside from the anticipation that I have about the performance of the product, it is a really visually appealing collection to me. One thing that kind of like stresses me out, and maybe it's only because I review makeup on YouTube, whenever products or like the packaging has too much writing on it, I'm just like, oh my god, I have to read all of this and then summarize it for everyone. It's unnecessary added stress, right? But you know, for the culture, let me just read some of this to you. It says, go for the woe with this palette of super creamy highlighters and tapered highlighter brush. Made to pair perfectly with our accent light highlighters, this super soft brush features the latest synthetic technology for superior pickup and payoff. And you can see the brush is made in China while the highlighters are made in Italy, I believe. Oh yeah, it's printed on the back of the actual palette, which will not focus because this is a mirror, so the camera's like focusing in on itself. But it says made in Italy on this palette. Pretty much exactly what I expected from seeing a bunch of other reviews on this. Why is that not focusing? 
yeah so like really really large weighty luxurious feeling i would say it is it is luxurious overall, but it's a tad bit on the brink of being tacky. Maybe that's because I'm just really used to the pristine, just so qualities of Japanese makeup. So this is not a critique directed at Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics in particular. Sometimes even when I look at uh, so-called Western high-end brands like YSL or Guerlain, I get the same feeling of bordering on tackiness when it comes to their packaging. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just kind of like the disconnect between those brands as opposed to Japan produced brands. Like RMK for example, does not give me that type of tacky feeling. But anyway, it is very beautiful as you can see. And um, oh god, you know, so it comes in this box thing, right? And on top of it, there's a postcard with Look at that, more writing. All right, let me just read this for the kids. You're looking at an original. Our accent light highlighters are made using a proprietary filling process, I don't know what that means, that creates unique one-of-a-kind patterns in every pan. This is no ordinary highlighter palette. It's a work of art. All right, all right, you know, she's proud about, she's proud of her product, she's allowed. I just don't really, um, I don't understand the point of mentioning that unique one-of-a-kind patterns in every pan. I mean, doesn't that apply to literally any other makeup product produced under the sun, right? No one item is ever going to be identical to the next. But I mean, I guess it's marketing, whatever. So this is what the palette looks like. Very large pans. I'm really pleased about that. And if you turn it on its side, maybe it's not so visible on camera, but the powders actually protrude up quite a bit. So it's kind of like if you think of baked powders, like a baked eyeshadow or something. I see the same thing going on here except it's not a circular mound, this is more rectangular. But it does protrude up quite a lot. It looks like four big pillowy cushions. Now from a product amount perspective, I do really appreciate that. I feel like you're getting a lot of product in each pan for your money. At the same time, it just makes me like a tiny bit nervous, especially since I'm traveling, that these might be prone to falling out or cracking or something later down the road. I do have to admit though, we've been so busy these past few days moving from city to city that I haven't, this is like the first time that I've been able to really take this out and play with it properly. I've actually just been chucking like this entire box with a brush into my suitcase and bumping that thing all across town. You know, if I had more time to think about it, I would not have chosen to do that, but since we were in such a rush, I kind of just threw it in there and prayed for the best. I have to say, very impressed with the resiliency of these shadows. Not a single crack or fissure to be seen. And from this point forth, I'm going to actually keep this in my carry-on bag. I'm so sorry, I have been rambling this entire time. Here are the swatches on the back of my hand. Again, it's pretty much on par with what I was expecting. Very smooth, buttery. A little bit quick to fade, might I say. I don't know if that'll change after I apply it to my face because I do have my cushion foundation on with no powder finishing on top of it. So hopefully the highlighter will be able to cling to my foundation. Maybe it'll be more long lasting that way. As far as the hand swatches, I've had to redo this once already during the filming because I did this before I set up my camera in the bathroom here and by the time I, you know, got myself ready, I noticed that it had faded a little bit. But colors and finish wise, it's very pretty. Now it definitely looks like a formula that is going to emphasize the, like the texture and the fine lines in your face. But then again, I think that's kind of inevitable for any type of blinding highlight. Usually when people don't want to draw attention to their texture, or they have more mature skin, they go for a softer, more natural option. But we are not about that on this channel, at least not most of the time, and especially not on vacation. I'm just pulling out the brush right now. Ooh, okay, this is her little highlighting brush. I was actually really excited about this as well, almost more than the palette itself, because I've never quite seen a highlighting brush designed exactly like this. I just have a good feeling about this shape and size of brush. Oh yeah, that's really soft. So this is the J02 brush. 
and it is synthetic. It has a clear handle with a glitter gradation right here. I have a good feeling about this brush, you guys. I want to put this on my cheeks right now. Okay, so it picks up the product really well. So this is the shade Glow Up in the top left. Ooh. I feel like my right cheekbone is like an iota more poppin' than my left cheekbone. See that point right there? That doesn't exist on my left cheek. It looks like it does because I put the highlight there, but this one is more protruding. Okay, wow, yes. I really love the density of this brush. It's not quite as blinding as I thought it would be, but maybe that's a good thing because I feel like you can build this up as well. So you can control the amount of luminosity that you want depending on your mood or the scene that you find yourself in on any given day or night. It's really nice though. It's almost like a wet sheen effect, like really healthy and dewy. Kind of almost looks like sweat glistening on your skin, but in a really good way, like after you've been for a light jog or something, some push-ups, some light cardio, none of which are things that I participate in. Pretty scent free for the most part. I could have sworn there was like a light vanilla scent in there, but maybe I was just imagining things. Yeah, no, it doesn't smell like anything. There's a tiny, tiny hint of like sour-ish chemical smell. I know that the word sour sounds really bad, but it's not because it's rotten or anything. I can tell that it's just, it's just the chemicals. All right, so I think I'm ready to finally get around to applying stuff on my eyes. I'm actually going to be using one of my RMK Stone Whip Eyes Liquid Moussey Eyeshadows as a base because I don't feel like dealing with eyeshadow primer today and my battery's gonna die so we'll continue this on webcam. Back to the low def life. All right, I am going to take this RMK Stone Whip Eyes Eyeshadow in number, wait, I'm gonna use this one, number six, to, two, two mines? Like two minds are better than one, I'm guessing. Um, so these are both in, God, you can't really tell on this camera, but these are both in the reddish burgundy family. Now you would expect that this one would be more dramatic because it's darker, but it's actually more wearable, I think, than the red one. I'll swatch both for you because why not? This one is actually a more purplish plum base than this one. Now this one comes across pretty mild as well on this camera, like it almost matches my nail color right there, but it's actually really bright and noticeable when you put it on your eyes. I think because this one, there's more of a metallic base to it when you spread it out, whereas this one is just more smoky and natural looking. So we're going to go with the purple number six. The difficult thing about these shadows is that it is really hard to control the way that these blend out. Like you kind of have to use your fingers because they don't work that well with brushes. But if you can see, it's kind of like difficult to control the way that the gradient fans out. See, I already kind of messed it up. But at the same time, it's okay because I feel like I can afford to be a little more sloppy with this color. Not so much with the brighter red though. I am so sorry about the bus noises in the background. You're also kind of under a time constraint because it basically dries down within 30 seconds. So you have 30 seconds to move it around and to adjust it to the intensity that you want. But then once it sets, it's not going to budge. They're not for everyone, you know, but I think I have gotten pretty good practice with using them on this trip in particular. It is a great product in the sense that you only need one shade to... Um, create an entire eye look. You can use your fingers, you don't have to bring extra tools with you, which is always a pain when you're traveling. Oh, and actually you want to know what's a huge bonus about this formula. These eyeshadows do not stain your eyes whatsoever. I can leave these on for 13, 14, 15 hours as I have been doing for the past week and Every single time at the end of the day with that first swipe of the makeup remover wipe, it comes off 
completely cleanly. No residue whatsoever left on my eyelids. I don't know about you, but I for one am so sick of all of these eyeshadow palettes and pressed pigment shadows coming out on the market recently that look great when you initially apply them, but then it's like even after you remove it, especially if it's a bright unnatural shade like red or blue, even after you remove it, it's like you're walking around for the next 48 hours of your life with a huge stain on your eyes and it just doesn't come out. I'm sick of it. So that's one thing that I really appreciate about this eyeshadow is that when it's on your eyes, it's completely dried and budge proof, crease proof, perfect. But then at the same time, removal is the quickest, cleanest thing ever. I really don't know how RMK did it, but those two things combined in a single eyeshadow formula is no small feat. All right, so now I'm going in with the Jaclyn Hill highlighter palette. And I'm going to take some of this red shade on the bottom right here. This is called Turned On. Really beautiful metallic red. And I don't know what I'm going to do exactly. I just want to dot it like down the center to add a little bit of dimension. Oh yeah, and I'm kind of confused as to why she felt the need to put Jaclyn here and take up all this space when it's already stamped in huge letters on the cover of the palette. Why waste another strip of space on the inside to add your name again? I don't... I guess the ego has to fit in somewhere. Don't worry, Jacqueline. I understand. I understand the narcissistic urges as a baby narcissist myself. How can I not be as a Leo Snake Slytherin? But you know, sometimes it would do you well to force yourself to constrain the ego like just a tiny bit in the public sphere it'll only serve to benefit you in the eyes of your peers in the eyes of your peers and contemporaries that looks really cute actually i'm gonna put on eyeliner and eyelashes now and i'll meet you back here all right so let me put on let me put on some finishing touches. I'm just going to go in with this. Oh my god. What the hell? I'm going to go in with a little bit of glow up and I'm just going to I'm just going to accent the inner corner of my eye and also my brow bone. This is actually quite a golden looking highlight. It looks a little more peachy beige in the pan, but it's quite golden on the skin. It's a little intense for my skin tone, but it still works out. If these ever come back in stock, which would mean that she wasn't really telling the truth about this being a limited edition item, but knowing me, if they do come back in stock, I will probably go ahead and purchase the lighter toned palette as well because I'm a glow fiend. What can I say? All right, this is definitely the glowiest that I have looked on this vacation so far. And I have on my trusty RMK lip gloss in Glimmer Pink. Look at how much I used up, you guys. I'm so excited. I'm probably going to empty this really soon. And yes, I will be purchasing a new one after I empty this because I really do love this color. I dropped this on the pavement the other day, though. Look, it's like nicked here. So sad. But um, yeah, I... I'm feeling this makeup today. It's a little more bronzy golden than I usually go for, but I'm not mad at it. It kind of reminds me of Megan Thee Stallion, you know, the rapper. I'm obsessed with her, by the way. Hey, big old freak, huh? big booty, big old tree. But I feel like she does this type of a makeup look pretty often. Red eyeshadow with the golden bronzy highlighter and such. So I'm ready to have a hot girl evening today after this rainstorm is done, though. Can you hear that? It's like flash storms outside for the entire day. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. I'll see you guys later. Bye!